Are you old enough to remember this? This is the AT&T operator. Hello. A live telephone operator helping you when you had a question. Okay, I can give you an estimated amount. Did you dial that direct? Yeah. It was a real human voice. Sure, what's the number you're calling? Always a woman, always helpful. We were all used to this back then. It was the way it was, until it wasn't. Hey, yeah, operator, what was that I heard? I, I heard something that sounded like a, a robot or something like that. I'm David Hoffman, documentary filmmaker, and I loved operators. And I worked with AT&T from 1980 until the mid-90s. And you are about to see an amazing moment that I happened to capture recording something I didn't know would be historical. A moment when the operators are kind of being asked, what do you think of mechanical voices? What do you think is going to happen to AT&T? What do you think the customers are going to think? What do you think about these machines? Well, the operators have very strong opinions, as you're about to hear. AT&T is caught at this moment with MCI, cheaper price, cheaper price, cheaper price, make it cheaper, make it lower. And AT&T figuring out every way they can to save money. And the hundreds of thousands of operators cost a lot of money. So the operators are going to go. Does the man speaking at AT&T know that? I'm not sure. I'll tell you more about that at the end. But take a look at this moment when AT&T is asking the operators, what do you think of machines speaking to customers rather than you? <laughs> well, I, I'll start off and say that we, uh, uh, John and, and Jack and I are here to visit with you uh, about VRCP because Longview, uh, has the unique dis distinction of having spent, uh, what, 90 days or so feeling it, uh, dealing with customers who are talking or dealing with it, and sitting in the lounge and talking about it. And so you have more feel uh, for it than anybody else in the country. What, what did you think about the, what customers said? What did you think about it personally? Yeah, I've worked on it. And um, it's, it's, it still won't replace a real operator, not in my eyes. It's, it's different. Why won't it replace an operator? Well, because um, it's not a real person. Because it's not a real person, it's a recorder. And in emergency situations where a child were to pick up and they wanted to need, they needed an emergency, it was an emergency situation, it would be hard for them to listen to the choices when they're screaming. People that are used to technology did real well on the system and you know they picked up on it. We have people, elderly people, that, that still can't dial a call direct and I don't think that they would ever learn to work the system. I mean they still can't grasp O plus dialing, much less grasp a system like this. Just sometimes pick up the phone just need a friend and they know that that's what we are. More or less than just an operator. We are not just an operator, we are their friend, we are they're co-workers sometimes. We are their confidants. And the, the robot can't do that. Just, I guess, the same as with operators. But we have handicapped customers that can't even dial directly. And so they, they couldn't can. punch a button. or If it was voice activated, it, it may work for them. Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody in our business who would uh, argue the point that uh, that uh, this is a replacement for an operator, okay? I think there will always be in my mind, and I've been in this business 25 years, and some of you, I assume, have been in nearly that long, although some of you clearly not. From the 25 <laughs> years that I've been in this business, it's been one constant technology innovation after another. So I don't know if anybody, I certainly am not going to argue with you or, or dispute the fact that it, does, that it will replace a live person. I think there will always be, in my mind, a role for the operator in our business. A lot of people, that's basically why they use AT&T, like Priscilla was saying, because you know they have an operator that can assist them, you know, instead of having to talk to machines. I think everybody who has touched this technology and has worked with it understands that, that the first um, principle is choice for the customer, and second, it's access to a live operator as soon as they need it. And sometimes it is time consuming. When a customer comes on the line and they may say, operator, this is collect, and they get into the call and they say, oh, it's not collect, I'm sorry, I mean, I need to just bill it to my calling card. It's too late. It's going mm -hmm. through collect, and they're going to have to take time to hang up and redial again. 
and they're not used to that. They're used to ch ha having the choice of being able to change their mind in just a matter of seconds, where now it's going to take more than just a few seconds. I'd like to, to really get at the heart of it. I think the heart of it is the issue around job security. And I think, you know, and again, I've been in this business 25 years. And in the 25 years that I've been in it, we've always been introducing technology, always been introducing technology. That's one tradition. I think the other tradition is the way we care for our people. And I don't, I don't want to overstate that. I'm, you, know, I'm, you don't have to, to, uh, to take that as gospel. I'd like to get some sense about that. I mean, I really do believe we have a tradition of caring for people around technology because it's part of our business. So, uh, you know, that's, both of those are kind of, kind of hang in together. Not only are we going to reduce technology, but what do we do with people? If you did it, your customers would quit. They would go to MCI or to Sprint because they tell you there, thank you for being there. You know, you, you've made my life a, a better place. And there's no way that the machine could replace us. If they did, AT&T would probably go out of the long distance business. They'd lose their customers. I'm from a long line of, of telephone company. My mom and Ann have all retired from the phone company. I was raised phone company. That's all I know. And I just, in my heart, I just don't believe you can ever replace me. You just can't do it. Not with a machine or, or with anybody else. Because I'm good at what I do and so are my operators in there with me. And this machine, it just has no place. No matter what options it gives your customers, there's one, always somebody out there that says, thank God. I've reached an AT&T operator. You know, they're, they're telling the supreme being, thank you for letting me have a human being on the line. Because our world has gone, it's gone crazy with technology and there's no place for it. Among always getting a customer that says, yes. do you have a pulse? <laughs> you know, do I have a reached a human? <laughs> you know, you said something, I, you said that I'm good at what I do. You know, well there's 17,000 AT&T operators out there who are great at what they do. and and, and all of the um, time and energy and research and trying to understand this technology really is because of those 17,000 people. It isn't, it isn't just, our, and our customers. I mean, it isn't, uh, we're not rushing pell-mell and, and Harry scurry into something. We're, we're doing this in a very deliberate and a very uh, uh, mindful manner. In the last year, six months or so, we've gotten so customer oriented and every you know much yep. more personalized with your customers and much more and then all of a sudden here comes some technology and it's totally the opposite and you feel almost kind of like from one extreme to the other i have a sense and tell me if this is what i'm hearing that somehow or another the company's breaking faith with you I, I don't mean i, I don't okay. mean more with the customers i think more breaking with the, faith with the yeah, customers i think it's more with the customers I, i'm not speaking as an operator i think it's with the customer well is it your sense that we're going to cram this down their throats i mean you know it's, i hope it, not <laughs> whether they want it or not the hardest thing uh going to vrcp is sitting there and listening to an elderly person a hard of hearing person a person that stammers and you just want to <laughs> just stop it and, and help them and by the time it, they get totally confused and they either hang up, they lose their call and just give up. And, and you have a lot of people that travel and it's not all businessmen that get on those planes. There's children on those planes. There's servicemen on those planes. You're touching a lot of lives in just that few seconds. And whether you want it or not, this machine's gonna answer your call. And when they announce it to an elderly person, she says, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. And says, I'm sorry, that didn't, I didn't understand that response. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take it. I'm sorry, that's not a valid response. Please help an offer. By the time it gets over there, you're, they're totally confused. They, they feel like, you know, I'm paying for something here I'm not getting. You're absolutely right. And there is work going on to, to look at what we call the call strips and the whole flow of the, uh, the presentation to the customer. But at the same time, the other point that you hit on was that the, uh, uh, your sense is that, that we haven't really presented a choice to the customer. So t to the person who stammers or to the elderly person, they dial an O-plus call and we are, if you will, requiring them to, to uh, go through this. Well, that is also on the table clear, clearly to, to everybody that we need to position the product in a way that those that want to use it can use it and those that don't want to use it or can't use it know what their options are and know how to get to an operator. Especially on the weekends, are, the majority of people are not the best educated uh, they're not the most well-traveled, they're foreign customers, 
They're customers that, that need help in the first place, that don't have change. They're <laughs> college kids that maybe have forgotten some that need help. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be there. And if you're not, you're going to lose like a bulk of just like, you know, I'm going to rip your heart out and you're going to take it. You know, because, you know, you have no other choice. You, you're in that position at that time and you have to do this or you won't get your call. So as I said before, I did not know that this was going to be a moment in history, a major moment. Did those guys know that the operators were going to be gone? Hundreds of thousands of them, call centers, all gone, replaced by machines. Did they know that? Are they in effect lying to these women? I don't think so. From the folks I knew at AT&T, they really believed in the operators and they believed there would be two systems. They didn't see the full extent of what was coming. Why did it come? I think you need to know that. Price. AT&T was in this pitch battle against MCI. Uh, you know, a dollar, 99 cents, 98 and a half cents. And all they cared about at the time was staying in business and money. Operators cost a mint. Call centers cost a mint. It was cheaper. Was it better? Would they say it was better? No. Do they feel badly that it went the way it did? I think so. Because that company, AT&T, when I worked there, it was a beautiful thing. This sense of family, wherever you went in the country, to all the call centers, up the technology centers, it was really beautiful. With all the companies I've worked for, that AT&T experience is unique. And I don't know that there is a company today that has that camaraderie and family feeling and generations quite like they did. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber. David Hoffman, filmmaker, you take care.